Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to take a brief, brief introductory look at, at GameKit Studio. Uh, I'm actually thinking about turning this into a, a series and it will be on today on Thursday. So on Tuesday we'll do the um, Acid Pro series and on Thursday we'll learn how to use App Game Kit Studio. Uh, I've been interested in game design to some degree for quite some time. Proposed some ideas to some people about things I might want to do, but I never actually sat down mostly because I wanted to dedicate more time to this channel and other things in my life, but things have turned around a little bit, so I might have a little more time. And if that's the case, then there is an idea that I have for an interesting game, at least interesting to me. You can't make something that pleases everybody. You kind of have to accept that in anything you develop that you, uh, you're you not going to make everybody happy. But if you make some people happy, you're doing all right. So let's load it up. And I did not start the program on purpose because as this is the first look, I want you to see it basically as I unbox it. Just loaded the key. Let's see how long it takes to load and what loads with it. And that was actually pretty quick. So I will open this up and we're going to take a quick look around at the actual just application itself. Uh, I have not used this before, so I am not a hundred percent on what all the windows are technically called in, in swell app game kit dev speak basically, but we will, uh, we'll take a look around, see what some of the menus do and see what some of the things are. And like I said, this is going to be a, just a brief checking things out kind of video. Uh, we're going to get into some, uh, some actual, product use in the next video. I'd say most importantly, the first thing I notice over here on the right side is the help screen, which has a lot of documentation on how to use a lot of very useful things in programming. Uh, tutorials like you wouldn't believe, which is awesome because I, I have a couple of these other programs that, that say they have tutorials and the tutorials don't teach you anything. They teach you like the most basic stuff. But anything that's going to go into actually integrating Vulkan and technology into your games is awesome. If it's going to show you how to do that, you're going to learn and you're going to, you're going to figure out how those things integrate. Um, someday I'll actually have to go over my, basically my resume uh, of, of all of what I did and, and things that I've done in the past. But for now, just suffice to say that these key points are very important to learning how to integrate graphics and performance into your applications, especially when you're doing things for games. Since not many people do low level programming anymore at the device code level, it's really hard to manipulate graphics and things like that in an effective way, especially if you're just starting out. I mean, you get to a point where it's second nature and you just do what you got to do to make it happen. But there's, there's a, a leap that you have to go to for that. Whereas, you can't just like throw graphics on a screen and expect them to perform in any kind of way. Uh, integrating them in usually requires some kind of joiner between the actual application and, and the system and them showing you how to integrate this in and use the APIs that are going to do that for you are awesome rather than having to write them for yourself. So that's awesome. Uh, I guess you get a preview window down here that's going to show you what's going on. Uh, down here we have where you can integrate media files, which is awesome because they have models and textures and sounds and shaders and code snippets. Those are all great things to be able to do. And you have an all media, so you can see all your media in here, which is nice. I don't actually have any media in the product yet, but I will. I might come up with a little something for the next video so we can uh, play around with that with like some basic things, putting models and code in here so that we could tie that in. But I also like the fact that you can trim your view down. So if, if you're like, I've got a really big project that I'm working on, and I'm assuming it, it bundles these by project, which would make sense. Um, I got a project I'm working on that's huge. It's, it's, it's lots and lots of data, and I got to find that sound. Well, it's nice that you can just click on this and narrow your search down to sounds rather than have to search through all media every single time. I like that feature. Uh, small icons, medium icons, large icons, standard stuff. The message window, I'm assuming this is like a debug window, but don't hold me to that because I have not really used the app yet. All these little down arrows will hide the tabs, 
which is great because eventually, probably uh, once we get started, we're going to hide this, home, this help and get it out of the way so we have more to work in in what I guess I'm going to call the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. And uh, down here we have an asset browser so we can, uh, can look through here. And I guess we're looking in the classic DLC media, but we don't actually have that. So I have to download that. Uh, you got your project up here, which is what you'd name your project, and a debugger over here to tell you when you messed up. Up in the menu bar, new project, open project, save current file, uh, save all open files, which is probably going to be used more than you would usually use in another program. Uh, in the editor, this would be a uh, back and forward, so you could actually probably replay your commands in. So if you wrote a line of code that wasn't working right, you could introduce your code bracket as you put it in, bap, 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 line, 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 and then back it out as one by one. You can compile your code, which is important because you don't want to run an application as a uncompiled application using some kind of Java environment or whatnot, or having to use a particular application to play the things that you make. Like one alternative in this genre has, you actually have to uh, distribute a player with your application and your application doesn't compile as an executable, it compiles as a uh, component of this player. So someone would run the player and then the player would execute your application. Way too complicated, way too much effort, way too much pain in the butt. So we got run and broadcast. I'm not really sure what broadcast does. I don't want to say because I don't know. Debug mode, probably a stepper and fine, which is always really important. And a lot of these tools leave that out. I'm sorry, but if you write a program and you've got 300,000 lines of code, you want that fine button. Coming up to the menu, we've got the same things up here. You can export projects to Android. Uh, you can compile them, but I'm not sure what you can compile them for. I don't think we can do a compile because we don't have anything to compile. But we'll check that out in a future episode. Edit, you've got basically uh, the standard stuff in edit along with preferences, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Searching, you can do find, find next, find, replace, and go to line. Those are all awesome. View, you can change your fonts, and you can change how the windows look. That's really good to see. And build, you can do a compile, a run, uh, FPS run, which I'm assuming runs it and tells you the FPS counter to tell you how well you're doing. Broadcast, I really got to look that up and find out what broadcast means. Let's do that right now, because I want an answer on that. Doesn't really give you a clear indicator as to what it is. Uh, the broadcast listener. Broadcast are special network communications as they do not use destination address. All right, so that makes sense to me because basically it screams out on the network that they're available and goes. So I, I can kind of see where this is going, but I don't see why it has a button. So it isn't really what the function is here. That's more of a networking protocol. Oop, did not mean to do that. Oh, well, we'll be able to open that again later. Word count. Word count's actually kind of cool. Um, if you are a programmer and you are working in uh, development and you're doing code by, by line, so you're paid by lines of code used, and a big trick that programmers used to use way back when I got started was uh, your comments would count as uh, lines of code. So you'd write 250 comments and then write one line of code. They eventually caught on to that, so it didn't work as well. But doing a line count, so if you're doing consignment work or you're doing something that's uh, CPL, you can actually provide a full line count so you know what you submitted and you know what you should be getting paid out at. So that that's actually kind of cool. Uh, words and lines, those, those are awesome things to be able to count out. Uh, and saw additional files. App Game Studio comes with a set of example projects for basic and a native set of libraries development C++. By default, these are located in the AGK Studio installation folder, but it might be more convenient to store them elsewhere. No, we don't need to do that now. And then the help. So we've got user guide, command reference, command help, help home. Is that going to bring it back up? No, it's not. Video tutorials. App Game Kit website, the Game Creators website, community forum, uh, the Discord group, uh, the player for Android and player for iOS. 
and about. So we'll see about that player thing and see if that's using the same formula that the other one uses where you actually compile your application as a uh, simple project and then it has to use a player in order to integrate the app into a situation. But for now, let's look at the preferences and see what our options are. That's kind of cool when menu lets you move the menus around. Uh, the editor gives us a lot of options about indentions and things like that. Those are handy. Uh, as an old time coder, I use these often. I have a certain preference and pattern for auto indentation that I use. So that to me is good. The IDE, uh, large icons, classic DLC, upscale, remove blur. These are all great features to have in a, in a development app that you're, you're working with. And my IDE is running at 29.2 uh, FPS. So that's awesome. And you can actually change your IDE update interval to allow VSync and full speed and 60 FPS and 30 FPS. I guess you have to restart it in order for the changes to take effect. That's cool. At least it gives you options, build options. Let's build in 64 bit mode, which is definitely what you want to use because you don't want to um, lock yourself into a 32 bit build environment in IDE if you cannot help it at all. Uh, broadcast, I really need to understand what that is. I'm wondering if that is allowing you to uh, push out to another device so people can see. Kind of a demo thing. Which is a great feature if that's what it is. Auto hide debug window, debug and start. Uh, on debug start, update watches and status. That's good. Try to bring any app to front. That works. Style generator. Those are fine. And keyboard shortcuts. Control Z, Control Y, Control C, Control V. These are all pretty standard just keyboard shortcuts. But I can see I like the ability to customize them. I mean, hitting uh, Control F to get fine to come up is great, but if you want to use Control F for something else, you have the ability to do that. It's especially critical in things like this because if you want to define a key as a control, you don't want to have that key doing something in the application. So if I need Control V to be increased speed, in my game, I need to turn that to something else so that I'm not pasting every time I'm trying to make the game speed up. So that is an awesome feature that I'm sure probably is underrated and underappreciated. So those are the options. This is the basic IDE. This is what you're looking at. And I don't recall how much this one actually is. Let me look right now. I don't even know if it's available. Uh, app game kit. Oh, no, it's under. Software. And I have the app game kit classic. I've had that for a while. And that's one of the ones I've used. I've also used artisty drafts. So we're going to, um, we're going to take a look at this one and see, and then we can do some comparison. All right. This is currently a hundred dollars. So you can get a demo to show you what's going on, but we're gonna to try to do some things with this and see what it'll handle and what it can and can't do. But I actually, I'll put a link to the Steam store where you can go check this out for yourself. There is a uh, some DLC for it, a Mega Media Studio pack that you can download. And they are awesome. Uh, I mean, this company in itself is awesome for updating their software. So that is a great benefit to getting something with them is that they uh, they do upgrade their software really often so that that's that's awesome all right anyway that is it for this quick intro tutorial for app game kit studio uh like i said we are going to go a little more in detail with this and come i'm going to come up with some examples for next time i just got the key so i did not have a good opportunity to sit down and come up with a, a, a demo app that we could play through and look at. So I wanted to just take a look at the application itself and see what we were getting into. Seems like a great opportunity to explore this and see what all this is all about. Uh, if this turns out to be a great application to work in, then that's great for us. We'll continue to maybe develop an app together. 
If it doesn't, I've got several other applications that we can A, compare it to, and B, use instead if we decide that this is not gonna meet our needs. It's the benefit of having multiple applications that do the same thing, is that you're not locked into doing one application to do task it isn't suited to do. Uh, if this application is not great for first person shooters, you get an application that helps you build a first person shooter. If this application isn't great for RPGs, for whatever reason, it can't handle dice rolls, it can't handle statistics, it can't handle things like that, then you get an application that handles RPGs. Doesn't mean this is a bad application, it's just not the application for your particular purpose. So we need to find out what this can handle and what particular purposes this is good for. But I've got an RPG in mind that I wanna to put together that I think you guys might like. And if I could do that, then maybe we can build it together and it'll be our application and uh, you guys can have input on it. And that'll be cool. But uh, we'll see how it goes. And like I said, we're gonna look into this further. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of experimentation with this and see what we can get out of it. Uh, but if we can't get it to go in the direction we want, I've got another application that we can try. And we're gonna try it anyway so we can compare it to that application as well. But we need to get a little bit into this one to see what's going on with it. Anyway, that is App Game Kit Studio. And this is the 2019 version that just came out recently on Steam. And there'll be a link to it down below, like I said. I'll see you guys next week if you're interested in a tutorial on this. And we'll get rolling on it see how we can make some games. See you then.